Okay, so in this video, I want to go over what is going on with Medicare Advantage plans, whether they're good for you, whether they're good for some people. As most of you already know, if you're researching this year about Medigap plans versus Medicare Advantage plans, or just all of the above, there's 50% of the people that are on Medicare or on a Medicare Advantage plan. So why would these plans be so bad? Why can't you get on one of these plans and pay a zero premium and have just as good a coverage as someone who has a plan G or a plan N. So in this video, I'm gonna dive into the raw stats and data of why you should stay on your Medigap plan G or plan N, or why you should move from a Medicare Advantage plan to one of these plans if you can pass underwriting. The first thing I want to do is get into the costs of each of these uh, plans. So when we talk about Medicare Advantage plans, they're different all over the country there's different companies there's different for each state they have different companies in those states they have different plans they have different prices different networks so when you want to get on one of these plans you have to really specifically zone in on the zip code the state that you're in the hospitals you go to the networks the doctors the specialists everything so it's very easy for um, someone like myself or some other agent or broker, sorry about that, to talk about a plan G or a plan N because there's no networks and you can go anywhere in the country that accepts Medicare. But when it comes to Medicare Advantage plans, there's so many twists and turns and the numbers that we see are going higher and higher of the people that are getting on Advantage plans. Now, as a broker, I have over a hundred clients on Medicare Advantage. There's a reason for that. Specifically, number one, if they're under 65 years old and they call my office, the prices for Plan G or Plan N, if they even have those plans uh, for someone who's under 65 in their state or in their zip code, is about three or four times the price of someone who is uh, over 65 or turning 65, I should say. So um, that's one reason why I put people on Medicare Advantage plans, because the price could be five or six hundred dollars a month for a, a gap plan, as opposed to getting on a Medicare Advantage plan. And this is for people that are disabled, obviously, under age 65. Now, also in some areas, Medicare Advantage plans are really good. There are, there are some uh, plans that have huge networks and do hospitals, doctors in the area that accept it, and the plans um, are just pretty good plans. And I know those areas, and that's why I have some people on Medicare Advantage. But for the mass majority of my clients, they're on a Medigap plan. But I wanna explain to you how people get roped into Medicare Advantage plans. Now, if you see on the screen, I have three different examples. The first thing that I wanna tell you is if you see on the screen right here, uh, next to this Medicare card, it says $174.70. That is the average price in 2024 that you're going to pay the government for your Part B. Now, over, I think it's 99% of the people get Part A for free, but Part B costs most people on average $174.70 a month. One of the questions that I get, or some of the comments I get from people over the phone, they think that you're not going to pay this if you get on a Medicare Advantage plan. You are going to pay this no matter what. There are certain Medicare Advantage plans that give a Part B give back. Uh, there's usually a catch to those plans, but for the most part, everyone's going to pay this. So you're not saving money on your Part B. That's number one. Number two, we have to look at, most of the plans now are zero premium plans. But you really have to look at, in my opinion, two things, or five things really, but let's focus on the two most important things. Number one is how much is the hospital stay uh, per day? And number two, how much is the skilled nursing, or excuse me, uh, skilled nursing, where can you go with that plan and you only get 20 days as opposed to 100 with a Medigap plan? So the hospital stay, usually, if you look at a Medicare Advantage, it will say days one through six, you pay 350 a day, like you see on uh, the Medicare Advantage, the, the first one up there. The second one, it says, oh, it's $50 a day in the hospital. So 
you might get somebody on the phone, a broker, an agent, and they're saying, oh, this is, this is, uh, uh, this is a zero premium plan. It's a $50 a day. Yes, it's an HMO, as you see here, PPO and HMO. To be honest with you, from what I've seen, most of them don't make a difference because if, when it comes to Medicare, this is not under 65 insurance, like uh, regular insurance before you were on Medicare. When it comes to Medicare, even if you get a PPO, if you go out of network, a lot of, the net, a lot of the places will not accept your plan, number one. They do not have to. And number two, you pay a higher fee if they happen to accept the plan. So if you look at Medicare Advantage, number two on the screen, this is what some agents will try to pitch. Oh, it's a zero premium plan. Yes, it's an HMO, but if you stay in the network, it's, it's inexpensive. $50 a day in the hospital, you get skilled nursing. The maximum out of pocket is $1,900, if you see over here. It looks real, real enticing. But let me scroll down and show you the positives and the negatives of Medicare Advantage plans. The first thing I want to do is just go into the positives because you're going to hear this right away. The first one's zero premium plans. So they're either minimal, like $15 a month, $50 a month, or there's zero premium. Sounds great. Everyone always asks me, what is the catch? Uh, of course, when something's zero. Now, the one pro about this is they come with most of them, if they're MAPD, Medicare Advantage Prescription Drug, they come with a drug coverage for free. So that's a good thing because most of, when you get a Medigap plan, you have to get a separate prescription drug plan. So a lot of times people like to group these together. There's capped medical uh, out-of-pocket expenses. Well, if you get a plan G, it's capped also medical expenses. You're basically just paying your premium. You're paying that small deductible of $240 in uh, 2024. And then for your medical, you're paying nothing else. So that, that's capped also. Same thing with plan N. I mean, you have to pay co-pays, so you can never put a, an exact cap on it. But I don't think that's so much of a pro, but I just listed it here. One good thing about uh, Medicare Advantage plans are there's no medical underwriting. Well, so think about that. If there's medical underwriting for Medicare supplement plans or Medigap plans, but there's no medical underwriting for Medicare Advantage plans, meaning they don't ask you any health questions, everyone's accepted, hey, come on in. Which one would you think is better? The one that lets everybody in or the one that's going to say, hey, we have to our coverage is so good that we have to be selective on who we let into the plan or else we're going to be paying money out of pocket. Another good thing about the Medicare Advantage plans are they come with dental, vision, and hearing most of the time. Now, I've heard some good things and I've heard some bad things. So they have dental, vision, hearing for free. But the network, I've had good plans where people were on Medicare Advantage and they had to go to a dentist that was a half hour away and it was, they said it was kind of a weird experience but not a bad experience. They said, you know, the, the, um, the dentist was, was pretty good. The, the coverage was good. So that's a positive thing. Gym memberships, another thing. Um, a lot of people like to go to the YMCA or the Lifetime Fitness that cost a lot of money. And a lot of these plans give you free gym memberships. There's two more positives I wanna go over. Then I wanna get into the negatives, which is more important. They give you an over-the-counter allowance. It's like for 90 days, you get $70 or something like that for over the counter. You can go into your CVS or Walgreens or whatever. They'll send you a booklet and you can pick out things and get it for free. And then it's a flexible spending cards. Some of these have food cards. They have all sorts of things. I even heard one plan had a gas card attached to it. So it's all enticing you to get in. But let's move on to the cons. And this is very important. So here's the one thing. I'm going to tell a story real fast. There was a plan. I don't want to say the name because they were. it actually was a, a, a well-known company that most of you watching have heard of. But they bought a company that was not well-known that got all of these people into their plan with all of these things that you saw in the last, uh, if I scroll up here, all of these uh, dental vision, hearing, spending cards, whatever it may be. They got all these people and they thought, we're going to sell this plan to one of the big companies. You know the companies, the bigger ones. What happened was, all of a sudden, the doctors exited the network and they do not have to wait to open enrollment or January 1st to say, I'm not taking this plan anymore. Literally, they had signs on the door saying, we do not accept this. 
and it left people scrambling that were on that plan because if it's February and you're on that plan and all of a sudden your physician says, we don't take this anymore, you have to go somewhere else. And that is not fun as many people know. They love their doctors, they love their specialists, they wanna to go to specific things. That can happen and I've seen it happen. Okay, here's another thing. Uh, there might be a, a necessity for a more cost-effective procedure initially recommended by the doctor, meaning the, the doctor might say, hey, you need this, but then the plan says, well, first you have to try this, this, and this, and then we'll let you get your foot surgery. First, you have to go and uh, do a little physical therapy and see if you're really in pain and so forth, and then we'll let you go and get surgery on it. A lot of times they do that, and, and people are not happy about that. Whereas the Medigap plan, I never hear about that. Um, so that's a big con about, uh, you know, about the Medicare Advantage plans. Okay, another thing is you can find yourself locked in, meaning there's only certain enrollment periods. Medigap plans, you can uh, change 365 days a year. Whereas, I'm gonna scroll up a little bit. Whereas the um, Medicare Advantage plans, you know, there's only so many enrollment periods. You have your open enrollment, October 15th through December 7th, where everyone scrambles and says, I don't like this plan, I wanna get out. Medigap plan, you're not happy with it, which usually doesn't happen, but you can change 365 days a year. All right, I mentioned before the ongoing paying, payment of the Part B premium. I can't tell you how many people call me and when they do, they're saying, oh, I wanna budget. And I know for the Medigap plan, I gotta pay you know, this past year, 164.90 for my Part B. Then I got to pay, let's just say, $100 for my Medigap plan. Then I got to pay $5 for my drug plan. And they add it together. And they say, if I get a Medicare Advantage, it's zero. And I said, no, you still have to pay that Part B. Plus, you have um, co-pays and deductibles that you have to pay. So if you're on your Plan G or your Plan N, how much are you actually spending for the entire year as opposed to your Medicare Advantage plan? Here's a big one. Approval and authorization uh, prerequisites for items and services. If you have to get approvals, it will drive you crazy if you know this is what I need or if doctors uh, won't approve you for, for what is necessary to make you get certain surgeries or whatever it may be. That will drive people nuts and I've seen it. Um, and here's the thing. I'm going to read this because this is this is what it is. A non-medical plan administrator could assess these things and grant or deny these requests. So you have to look at who's actually um, looking at this and saying, oh, okay, this customer really needs this. It could, it's a non-medical plan administra administrator. It's not somebody who went to medical school who could be doing this. So that could be a big problem. Um, most plans come with restricted networks. I went over that. Uh, prior authorization. Denials may occur. Um, you might face increased expenses or lack of coverage for out-of-pocket costs. Um, a lot of times there's like numbers that they say, oh, it's going to cost this, and then it might be more than that um, because it's there's so much involved with the Medicare Advantage that if they send you a booklet and it has all these prices and all these different things, you could, you know, you could misconstrue what is actually in there, but... That's uh, on a higher level. Um, exiting the plan isn't an option if it's uh, not suitable for your needs. I went into that. Here's the big thing that I talked about. You get 20 skilled nursing days, not 100 like a Medigap plan, but also where are you going for skilled nursing? Here's another quick story. Um, I went to someone's house who was over the age of 65. They were on a Medicare Advantage plan. They had just gotten knee surgery and I was sitting there and they said, I called, they made me go to this specific surgeon. Um, he didn't know what he was doing. He was an idiot. And I had to go to him anyway, because this is who covered it. And my knee, I, it was, she had to get a knee replacement. Then they told her where to go to uh, get skilled nursing. She said it was horrible. She was in the room with somebody who was screaming all day or something like that. Um, it was just an absolute nightmare. And then they send you, uh, you only get 20 days, so they send you home. She needed more than that. Some people need four weeks, some people need two months. And so these are the cons of this. 
Back up here to the pricing. This is what you have to watch out for. If I scroll down, just look at Advantage Plan 1, 2, and 3. So you have hospital and doctor coverage. Sometimes the doctors are zero to go to your primary care, but the specialist might be $35 or $45 to go to. CAT scans, they could be $300 to go to. The maximum out-of-pocket, like I said, if you look at this, what usually happens with the Medicare Advantage plans, the more the maximum out-of-pocket, the better the plan is from what I've seen, not all the time. So if someone's telling you, hey, the maximum out-of-pocket is $1,900, you better call around and make sure that your doctor takes that exact plan. Do not call and say, hey, do you take Aetna or do you take Humana? Or if you call and say, do you take... Uh, United Healthcare, such and such, and the person on the phone who's not a doctor, who doesn't know, is, is a secretary or something, or maybe a bookkeeper says, Yeah, we take United Healthcare. Uh, I have another call. I got to go. Believe me, they don't know what they're doing, especially if they're not doing the billing. So, uh, with all these enticements to go on to Medicare Advantage, I can honestly tell you, you really need to weigh your options because as you get older, more and more things happen. Now, I'm not saying that Medicare Advantage is terrible or that I would never get on a Medicare Advantage plan, but there's only certain areas in the country that I would do this. And if I were you, I would do my homework on it. Thanks for watching my video. Please click on the links below to watch some of my other videos that I get into charts like this and show you actual some of the statistics and prices of plans throughout the country. I'll see you at the next video.